It wants to see something that's genuine. Yes. And, if it, and, and it can detect when something's not genuine. And unfortunately, the church, even some of the church you see uh, uh, messages, it, it's, it's not a genuine message. It's a message that's, that's on the sand. And so we, our lives, just like the wife, her conversation, her behavior preaches to the husband. And he doesn't even know it. He doesn't even know he's being preached to. But God honors it. You see, when we will submit, not, not because they're worthy of our submission, but because God Almighty has said it. God will honor it and He will do something in that person's life. When we do it, when we are in a right relationship with one another, when husbands are loving their wives, wives are honoring their husbands, the world will see that and they'll say, there's something real there. There's something genuine. This is something. I want what you have in your lives. And then you open your mouth and you preach Jesus. Jesus is the reason. Um, and so, uh, to your, he says, giving honor as unto the weaker vessel. And that's the way that God made our, our sisters, our wives. Not weaker in that sense of, because many times they could do a better job. <laughs> they could do a better job of running a church, running a business, running the home. But you see, God's order yeah. is what's important. Oh, that's right. it's, it's about God's order. And so it's not like God loves the husbands because He says, wives, well, submit yourself. That's not it at all. He loves them both. They're heirs yeah. together. Amen. You know, David one time was uh, very excited because they were going to go get the ark and bring it back. Mm -hmm. So they went because the ark had been captured. They went and got the ark and man, there was this, they got it up onto the cart you know, the ox was pulling the cart. He put the ark in there and there was shouting, clapping, dancing. And then remember the oxen stumbled. And it, the arks maybe started to slide a little bit. And, and the, the Uzziah maybe, was his name? He reached out to steady it. And God struck him. And he yeah. died. Man, that's, that's pretty serious. And David was scared of the Lord that day. Um, and David prayed and, and God showed him that they had not done it in the correct order. I mean, from the outside, it looked like, hey, here's a parade. This is looking good. Here's the ark, it's coming. People are happy. But you see, when we get out of God's order, then we're out of God's will. And He won't bless that. But when we get back in, in line with God's order, and what they did was, you see, the priests were supposed to carry the ark. Up on the shoulders, they had these staves or like poles, and they were supposed to go through the rings on the ark, and that's how they were supposed to do it. So they thought, you know, sometimes we can do that. And say, well, God, we can we can do things the way we want to do, because Lord, you don't understand. This is a new century, God. You don't understand. God understands very well. Amen. See, when we when we obey the, the written word, and in this case, it's about submission. And says, finally, he says in verse 8, Finally, um, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love his brother, and be pitiful, and be courteous. Um, and so on. You know, be of one mind. That's unity. God's order brings forth unity. When there's no order there, it's, it's, the unity is not going to be there. So see, the, but we all have a part to play in this. He says here, you be of one mind, you, and you have compassion one for another. And what I shared on Mount Mexico is about compassion, um, which I may do another time. But uh, having compassion one for another, that means we're looking out at one another. Uh, compassion is more than sympathy. Sympathy is where you look at a situation and you say, hey, that's, that's a rough situation. Oh, well, and you move on. Compassion says, is, is, is something that God quickens in you. And where you look at somebody, and it says over and over again in the Word, Jesus was moved with compassion. Compassion causes us to move and to, to, and to meet the need of whatever the Lord has shown you to meet. But see, love as brethren. Be pitiful. That means when we look at one another, what do we see? Do we judge? Is that really what it's about? Are we looking at other? Are we critical? Critical, man, is a poison in the church. Amen. It's, it's a poison. Now, we all go through it. 
Because we see things and we, we can... But it's what are you going to do with that? You know, it's very, very difficult to be critical of someone that you are fervently praying for. You know? Start praying for them. Somebody rub you the wrong way? Is there a, a sister or a brother sandpaper here among us? They rub you the wrong way? Well, God knows how to bring correction. And it, it might come through leadership or it might come through... Oh, you might be given a word for that person where it's maybe some sort of correction. Um, but pray for them. That's right. Begin to pray for them. And it says, be courteous. Amen. You know, it's interesting that um, in all of what Paul has written, all the doctrine that Paul wrote about, you know, a lot of the New Testament is basically about behaving. <laughs> it's about, you know, dwelling with one another, with one another in love. I mean, a lot of it is behave. We'll have a walk worthy of the Lord. And so, um, it was a good conference. It was, uh, even though there were some struggles and trials there, but uh, the Lord really ministered to us, to Clay, to Bobby, and myself. And something that Clay said to me that, that I thought was pretty remarkable, when I asked him how he thought things were going, he said, I just... I, I, I don't, you know, he said, I just feel like I have more love in, for people. Is that right? More love. I mean, that's the work of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. 